of you, if anyone ever comes to you or you hear anyone on YouTube or in the news, in the media, you know, anywhere coming to you and saying, hey, Russian economy is actually doing good despite of what is happening in Ukraine, despite all the sanctions, despite all this troubles and outside pressure. Ruble is strong, one of the best performing currencies. Unemployment is relatively low and in general things are not too bad. Well, you will be able to take my stream numbers that I'm going to give you and shove it up to that person's throat. Howdy, howdy, everyone. Welcome to Inside Russia. My name is Konstantin and I'm streaming live from the very heart of Russia, from the capital, Moscow. Not too far from the Kremlin. And I'm going to be talking about something not, not as heavy, something not as difficult for me to talk. Uh, economy, Russian economy. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you for joining the stream daily update what is happening thank you very much in russia well if we look outside right now it's september and in russia we have the saying the chicks are counted in september meaning you know the fall uh, the chicks are counted in the fall and this is september you know the fall so you know, the results uh, of what you saw, you can see the harvest, you can see in the fall. So this is the fall, this is September, and let's count our chicks, the ones who survived. And what is their number? We're going to talk a little bit about the economy, and this is an incredibly complicated thing to talk. I will try to be as simple as possible. I will try to give you a decent message. And the main thing is, so it's simple enough, so you understand. So um, I'm going to be talking about <coughs> real data that exists right now. And everything that I talk about, and uh, you know, in this stream, I based on the data released by the Central Bank of Russian Federation uh, and some leading economists, some you know leading analysts. Um, Central Bank is actually I trust data that come from Central Bank. I value and I respect the professionals that are employed there. The, uh, very, very professional in my eyes. So I have no problem using and believing that data. I think it's um, pretty accurate, give or take. You know, usually economy is judged by indicators. You know, there's tons of indicators of what happens, different, the results of different processes. And it's like a huge puzzle. You take all those indicators, you put them into a big picture, and you get the, 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 the picture of how economy is performing at any given time. And the same thing, some of the indicators can be used for forecast an economy, what's going to happen in the future. Because economy is like math. There's nothing, you know, nothing magical about it, okay? It's, uh, it's two and two equals four kind of thing. Um, let me tell you what is an indicator is. Indicator is a piece of economic data that is used by analysts to interpret current or current um, performance or forecast future economic performance. Uh, for example, GDP is an indicator. Consumer price index is an indicator. Unemployment rate, 
figures indicator price of crude oil is indicator price of natural gas is an indicator and so forth indicators can be divided into three groups first is lagging indicators and they are the indicators of what has already happened the past so to speak the second group is um, coincident indicators um, this is current occurrence what is happening in the economy now and the third group is leading indicators events that are happening right now but they will uh, have impact on the future performance of econo economy so right now i'm going to be talking mostly about um, lagging indicators in other words what has already happened in russia in the previous six months and you know six months is a good good um good period for any economy two quarters um, you can get results like i said the cheeks are counted in the fall so and also we'll look at the coincident indicators things that are happening right now they they kind of um, will show us the trend that our economy russian economy is um, currently having and you know that can kind of um, allow us to talk about what's going to happen in the future in the short term and, and, and middle term future well uh, let's see let me let me give you a little uh, a few steps back what happened in russia before february 24th on february 24th and within a couple months in quarter two and right now it's quarter three you know before february 24th 2022 russian economy was actually doing quite all right it was stable it was growing the growth was very gdp was growing the growth was very well not huge but there was growth so russia had very stable markets to sell its natural gas and oil to russia's largest resources and russian budget received 40 plus percent of all the earnings revenues from the sales of natural gas and oil that tells you that russia and we russians we would never starve if everything was going as it was going <laughs> then comes February 24th of 2022, and we all go into complete shock. I'm not going to tell you any details because I already have spoken so much about that. All the economists were, just like any, any people pretty much, were in deep, complete, absolute, cold shock. We didn't know what was happening. It was like a new world, old world just crumbled right in front of us. A new world, not even world, but I don't know what was that, just kind of like forming, okay? And everyone thought, me, myself included, we thought that Russia is facing, was facing a huge and very sudden and very... Um, very soon to be happen crash not decrease not just crash i called it and i keep calling it economic tsunami okay my estimation that tsunami was going to come in early september but then i changed my mind after elvira nabiulina i think in uh, either late may or early june she addressed Russian State Duma, Elvira Nabulina, the head of Russia's central bank. And she said that the uh, Russian economy is up for troubles starting midsummer. So I thought, well, she knows what she's talking about. And she does. I, I have respect for that lady. She's very professional. Uh, I thought she knows what she's talking about. And she kind of turned out to be right. Not 100%, but you'll see in a couple of minutes. 
so for two months everyone expected a huge crash like everything would crash russian ruble was trading at 70 plus i think 72 uh rubles per dollar that was the exchange rate in two and a half weeks the exchange rate increased to 137 rubles per dollar meaning if you had one dollar on february 24th you'd sell it for 72 rubles if you had one dollar in march 9th 8th or 7th you'd sell it for 137 rubles that's how weak ruble became the interest rate to um, contain coming inflation the central bank increased interest rate by like 13 percent unprecedented to 20 plus percent some 20 something 21 20 and a half unprecedented whoa i had not heard of that anywhere before even going to two universities studying economics. Whoa. What happened in the following months, Russian central bank and the Russian government, they did a very good job. I give them credit, complete credit. They um, did a great job containing this huge crash that economy was already undergoing. Um, given unprecedented conditions circumstances you know this russian special military operation and you know economic uh, economically thousand companies have left russia unemployment you know people laid off uh, sanctions um, reserves central bank reserves frozen uh, visa mastercard leaving swift uh, is cutting Russia off, things like that. It was unprecedented. I give Russian Central Bank complete credit. They actually saved Russian economy from crashing. And then comes quarter two. That was in quarter one. Comes quarter two, which is summertime. And the Russian economy stabilizes. Due to enormous efforts by the Central Bank and the Russian Ministry of... I think it's Ministry of... Uh, finance anyway the branch of the government responsible and at the same time russian army starts pushing further into ukraine meter by meter every day you know kilometer by kilometer and that gives stability to russian markets saying hey um not everything is so bad okay um so Russian economy stabilized on the expectations of huge crash that didn't happen, okay? But what happened was um, not 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 actually not so great. I'm gonna give you some numbers now. I'm giving you them to you right now because this is September and the central bank released the numbers for quarter. Was it quarter three? Pardon me. Uh, yes, that was quarter three. Um, confused a little bit. Two or three. Well, let's compare. We have definite economic data for qu quarter two in Russia, so we can ca compare it to the previous years. <coughs> and, um, you know... The first indicator, which is very important, is volume of incoming payments. And um, this volume is weighted by the shares of industries in GDP. So that's like a general indicator for different industries. It decreased by 1% from quarter, two, uh, from quarter 3 to quarter 2. And if we deduct payments of incoming payments for oil and gas, then the increase even higher, 2.5%. 
volume of outgoing payments also dropped by 5.4%. These two indicators are very important for the economy of any country. They show that the supply, how supply and demand behave. In this particular reason, they show us that both supply and both demand shrunk. We started selling less gas and less oil, and we started um, spending. People, companies started spending less, which kind of makes absolutely perfect sense due to, uh, well, we understand why Russia started selling natural resources less, right? Because sanctions and, you know, all these things. But Russian people, the consumers, the companies, they started cutting costs. They started, economic future is unknown. So I'd rather save as much as I can for the black day to come. 5.4%. That is a huge indicator. Usually when there's a recession, one of two th things happen. Uh, usually it's volume of outgoing payments, spendings is decreased because people start saving, but there's overstock of goods and services for sale. And, you know, companies start moving, selling as much as they can. The sales go up, but they don't, you know, don't, don't bring as much money. But in Russia's case, this summer, both indicators shrunk. And this is not a good indicator, not a good trend. Okay, so any one of you, uh, I'm sorry, anyone who's telling you that Russian economy is doing well, you just give them this number, period. Again, this is one of the main indicators, economic activity level of Russia. Um, Central Bank has done a quite a bit of analysis of this data and it has announced that the current dynamic is negative. The previous quarter dynamic was stable, wasn't growing, uh, well it was decreasing but not dropping, but the dynamic is negative for the remaining quarter and for the next year. That is also a huge statement about central bank because <coughs> government always tries to upplay things to keep people optimistic, but the central bank is actually giving cold shower to the ones who are trying to be artificially optimistic. Now, let's talk about another thing that is crucial for Russian economy, foreign trade volume. What it, does it mean? Russia is foreign trade dependent. Russian budget is foreign trade dependent, meaning about 50%, 40 plus, I think it was 45 uh, in 2018, the latest statistics, that data that I, I have. Uh, this indicator was, it means that almost half of Russian budget comes from selling others oil, gas, and metals. And, uh, you know, different kind of metals, the resources. And out of the, the resources, the biggest one is oil. It brings the most revenue because Russia simply sells oil more than gas in other resources. So how is foreign trade these days? <laughs> well, the volume of foreign trade is still high, but it's decreasing. The... Um, Trend, economic trend is decrease. Russia voluntarily left natural gas market of Europe for the reason, well, obviously political reason, but 
economic reason, it cannot be explained. We were selling something that we have in evidence and, and receiving lots of money for that. And all of a sudden, we decide to stop selling it. And we can't use it ourselves. There's overstock. We have to burn it or let it out. It just basically disappears, vanishes into thin air. And we're not getting any money. That's what we have done to ourselves, okay? So, oil is a little different situation, but the same trend, negative trend, because European countries have decided to stop buying Russian oil. Other markets also have decided to give up on Russian oil. And the only countries that are currently buying are India and China. And they're buying at a huge, huge discount. So, uh, oil and gas decrease will automatically lead to the deficit of foreign trade uh, volume. The, right now there's surplus. We sell more than we buy, but we will be buying more than we sell for one simple reason, because Russia is dependent on the money that it gets from selling of the resources, but also dependent on the products that it buys from other countries mostly from China. Electronics, technologies, components, car parts, you know, apparel, you name it, everything. We don't produce anything with like tiny qualities. We do not satisfy our domestic demands ourselves. Therefore, we buy from China. We stop selling. We stop getting money from Europe and from other countries. And yet, <coughs> we keep on selling. We keep on buying from China. Therefore, we spend money on things so our um, trading volume will be deficit starting quarter three and that despite the fact that natural gas and oil are traded at highest prices right now i mean there can't be a situation more desirable for russia you know because russia benefits the higher prices of resources, oil and gas, even with this high prices, our uh, trend is negative, you know. Russian ruble is strong, one of the strongest performing currencies in quarter two, okay. Um, if you have someone come in to you and saying, hey, look how well Russian economy is doing because ruble is so strong. You can take those words and shove it up that person's throat because at this point, when Russian, uh, Russian economy depends on selling oil and gas, strong Russian ruble is actually a disaster for Russia. It's driving Russian economy down. <coughs> the counterpart is that Russian ruble has been artificially lowered, has been artificially strengthened by the central bank with one purpose, to keep the economy stable, to uh, get the cap on inflation. That's what happens when the currency gets strengthened. Okay, And they did that quite remarkably. But imagine that. Um, let's say one barrel of oil costs $100. And um, in, let's say in February, it used to cost 100 and it costs 100 now. Suppose the price is the same. But in February, one ruble, one dollar costs 70 rubles. And now one dollar costs 58 rubles, okay? And before that, uh, in quarter two, Russian ruble cost, you know, uh, one dollar cost 49 rubles. So imagine that. So if you sell one um, barrel of oil at hundred dollars, then you get 7,000 7, rubles. 
at 70 exchange rate. But now you're getting 58 at 58 exchange rate. 5,800 rubles. Okay, so the lower the exchange rate for ruble, the stronger the ruble, the worse it is for uh, Russian economy because it depends on selling oil and gas. So what's going to happen is the trend is negative because Europe is going to completely give up on Russian oil. And India and China will be buying, but they will be buying even at a bigger discount because simply Russia has no one to sell it any, anymore, okay? And Russia will not sell any gas because it stopped Nord Stream 1, okay? It um, voluntarily stopped. I don't, <laughs> I don't know what they're really going to do. Um, so that much smaller amount of oil and gas that we sell to other countries, such as Turkey, um, I don't know, um, I'm not sure if we keep on selling to European countries, but some Asian countries, then we need to drive ruble, to make ruble much weaker, to somehow make up that difference in volume traded, okay? So for one barrel, we're going to be getting not, you know, 5,800 rubles, but 7,500 rubles. And the salaries to co-ops, to army, to KGB, to teachers, they're paid in rubles, not in dollars. You see? And the Russian government cannot just turn on um, the printing press and start printing rubles because that's going to shoot the inflation up big time. And that uh, is really bad. That's going to lead to bad things. That's going to lead to revolt eventually. So... Um, Foreign trade volume, deficit, and that is the trend that is currently happening. Now, let's talk about GDP. GDP, every, everyone understands this was GDP, gross domestic product, right? That's one of the main, like, main indicator of uh, economic growth or shrink shrinkage. Um, so... If we look at Russia's GDP quarter two, that we will see that it's decreased by 4.1%, just one quarter. Now, back when the special military operation started, back in February, uh, a lot of economists predicted that Disaster, just around the corner, waiting to happen. And GDP would fall, I heard different numbers, but I heard from 6 at the best case scenario, minus 6%, to, you know, 10% in 22, minus 10% in 22, minus 12% in 23, minus 10 to 12% in 24. Now, so... <laughs> So you understand what these numbers mean. When there's a depression, or recession, not depression, then usually GDP drops by a couple percent. When there's a huge crash, like in Russia, we experienced a large, real large, I would say crash, very, very short, but crash in 2008. In 2009, quarter four and quarter one of those years, we dropped by 7.5%. And that changed everything. But we didn't have special military operation. We had our sales of oil and gas. Okay, and they brought, and you know, Central Bank again did a pretty good job, and they brought the economy back quickly within year and a half, okay? Now, just quarter two of this year, minus 4.1%. That is bad. If anyone comes to you and says, well, listen, Russian economy is doing great. Ruble is strong. 
people are out in the shopping malls in St. Petersburg or in Moscow. Tons of people dining out. Tons of people, you know, spending money. I mean, look, everything's fine. You just can give that person this number, minus 4.1%, and that's it. That number means companies stop their economic activity activities. It means that people laid off. It means people not spending money. It, be, it means pe- uh, businesses decreasing the sales of their products, you know. Prices going up. That's what that number means. Um, the biggest industries that have been hit in Russia are trade, obviously, oil and gas and consumer goods, sanctions, no one sells to Russia anything anymore, and industry. <coughs> because industry is very dependent on foreign components parts, semiconductor materials, you know, it just turns out all of a sudden for us, for Russians, like we didn't know about that. We, we thought like your industry is industry. Turns out we don't really have that much of an industry, but we have a large assembly warehouse where all the parts from all over the world come to and they're getting assembled. So now I'm calling this not industry, but assembling, okay? And we simply don't have other parts. They stopped coming and we have nothing to assemble. Of course, we produce something. We produce some parts, some components, but the key ones we used to buy and we cannot buy them any longer. Or like right now, companies are sourcing uh, new ways, new logistic ways where to you know, buy them from and things like that. I made um, a stream earlier how Russians avoid sanctions and how we will be able to buy iPhone 14. If you're interested, go and watch dedicated stream for that. So anyway, these are the biggest drivers for the drop of GDP. Trade, wholesale trade, and industry. Um, other, Other... Other um, sectors of industry have been also hit, but not not as hard. At this point, the prediction for year 2022, and that's very optimistic prediction, minus 4.2% of GDP, decreased by 4.2%, not by 6%, as they were telling in the beginning, but 4.2 is was also huge. And what's going to happen in quarter three is going to be absolutely crucial. European sanctions package number six that forbids uh, buying Russian oil to European companies and uh, Russia stops selling, it's already stopped selling gas to Europe. Uh, that is going to drive Russian GDP this is my prediction. You can put that down. I'm going to put it down myself on paper. And we're going to compare the end of 2023. If nothing changes, nothing extraordinary changes, if the government is the same, president is the same, things are going the way they have been going, then I predict, and not just me, there are some economists, they predict that Minus 10%. GDP will drop down by 10% in 23 and from 8 to 12% in 2024. That's, again, that's forecast that I am making right now. We will see if I'm off or not. Right now, Russia has gone four years back already. Right now, GDP of Russia, as same as it was in quarter number two of 2018. Imagine that. We have already gone back four years. I don't know what to tell you.
what is happening in my country right now is really tragic and sad and unprecedented and illogical all at the same time. It's like there's a perfect storm above Russia, Russian economy right now. And again, don't, don't get me wrong. I'm not complaining. I'm not whining. I'm not asking why it's happening. That is crystal clear why. And in my eyes, Russia and the Russians have done it to themselves, ourselves. We have done it to ourselves, you know, by ourselves. We basically started shooting into our own feet. First one foot, then another foot, then elbow, then wrist, and so forth. And in the economic-wise, we are crushed right now. And the only reason why people are not experiencing really hard time and it's not visible on the streets and so forth. In some ways it is visible. Companies are closing. You know, uh, commercial real estate is plentiful on the market, you know, to rent. Um, These are indicators as well. But the reason why this is not a disaster yet, because of the savings, both personal and commercial savings. Companies are still using resources that they had accumulated before quarter two. And people, regular people, they quite a few have some savings and they have cut down tremendously on spendings. Just to give you a number, um, last year, about 20% of Russians traveled abroad for vacations. This year, 2% because it simply have become too expensive for people. You know, would rather save than to go and spend money on vacation. We don't know what's going to happen next year. So these are the only reasons in my mind, you know, that, that the reserves and incredible cut in spendings that are still keeping people somewhat visibly normal, okay? But that, the reserves are thinning, okay? And you cannot cut cut costs forever. So we're going to see very interesting changes, perhaps very depressing and very tragic changes in quarter four of this year and quarter one of 2023. And I will definitely be... Here, I'll be watching, I will be um, noting, I will be analyzing, and I will be giving you the data, real data from how I see it. This has been my message. Pretty complicated topic. I hope I explained it simple enough so you at least understood, understood something. Um, I would like to ask you two things before I turn on the comments. First, please share my message and other messages, other streams. Um, That really helps me. More people watch my messages that way. And second, please let me know how is your economy doing, where you are at right now, compared to, say, last year. What do you how like what do you see what what do you experience? Uh, inflation, um, no unemployment, and just general observations. It would really really help me out. Thank you so much. Let me turn the comments on. By the way, I'm drinking different tea today. Chinese, it's it's called pu'er in Russian. I'm not sure how you call it in English. But uh, it, this tea is a little different from what I'm used to. From Sri Lankan English breakfast, orange pico, or 
Earl Grey because this stuff is very, it's different. It's very potent. It has really strong taste, earthy taste, if you know what I mean, like a little smoky taste. My Sri Lankan teas, I ran out of it, so I gotta go and buy some on the weekend. See a few people commenting already. Excellent. Give me a couple minutes to make it easier for me to read. Lorna is number one. Mommy's right there. Toro eight star. B man. Bruce, Mickey Marketer, Camera Makers, Robbie Van Haren, Kyle, Jeffrey S, Sylvia, Harry Potter, Luke King, Robbie, Pivix, John, Rhesus, Airborne Snail, loved your joke about the carpets today, Mail, Malé, not sure, Frank in Texas, Gaby, Wild Wolf Pack, Gael, Karen, Pamela J, Ferrari, Jesteri, Bob S. Chirper, howdy, howdy. The usual suspects, thank you very much for coming back. Message was complicated and long, so I don't have much time for comments. If you want me to have a higher chance of noticing, please put it in caps and put my name after ad sign so it appears in the orange box, so I see it. I would really appreciate and uh, I really missed you. I got to tell you that. Last couple of streams were very difficult. Uh, before I start answering your questions, let me share some thoughts. I did not turn the commenting because sometimes you just, I can't do that, you know. I, I don't feel like lightly conversing with people, answering questions and stuff like that. Uh, it's too difficult. When topics of my streams are so important, so tragic, that they touch the very, very, very deep inside of me. You know, I, I just can do that. I hope you don't get upset. Um, but let me tell you something. I missed, I really missed conversing because I like actually reading comments, talking to people. I like... Um, I like it. It gives me it gives me motivation, strength strength to go, so to speak. You know. Um, so, thanks for being here. There are a couple. There's a super chat from Luke King. Is a question: Have you continued to stock up on goods and prep for worsening economic conditions? Luke, no, I have not. What I have done instead is I have stoked up on money a little bit uh, because I have this extra income from um, YouTube. Um, I spent a good part of it because, you know, I have so many things that I need to, to spend on. Um, I fixed up a roof in the house. I did tons of housework in Rostov. Um, things like that. So, but... I have saved up quite a bit of money and I have this, um, I planned out, so to speak, plan A, plan B, plan C. Uh, I have, I talked to my fa uh, uncle, who's a big time farmer, you know, when I asked him, basically, if if stinky substance start hitting the fence, you know, uh, fan, not fence, I, I have access to food, no problem there. My house is fixed up, generator is working, uh, everything is, there's plenty of water, I have reserve, things like that, the very basic stuff. But from what I understood and learned, it's not the food that we should be worrying here about in Russia. It's other things. I don't worry about food whatsoever. It's not a big deal, it's not an issue. I worry about People just knocking on my door and taking me away. And there's nothing, nothing I can do to prepare for that. 
okay not not any any kind of prepping can can do something about it so i also worry that my country and it's happened in the past in the recent past can declare another special military operation on another country i worry about that okay and there's not much i can do at this point it's very unprobable but you know what i thought that russia would never attack ukraine in february you know the story you know i made streams i made videos and so forth you know but hey that happened so that's what i really worry about hope i answered your question thanks for the super chat stop scamming man five pounds you principled demeanor radiates dignity if everyone in russia was like you the country would be in the other world thank you thank you so much i i'm not sure what this word means principled principle demeanor but i understand that's something decent thank you so much friend thank you thanks for coming here and thanks for the good words black Ed, the sponsorship giver champion thank you so much for giving another gift to five more people so they become they just became sponsors You know, due to you mostly, and to some other people, Frank and Bruce, and a couple other people, the sponsorship base is growing, <laughs> growing quite a bit. Thank you, thank you so much. Kay Sturtebecker, um, thank you for your super chat with no message, but 10 euro is message powerful enough. Thank you, I appreciate it. Um... Bruce has made sense. Good message today. Thank you. I was hoping that you'd understand. <laughs> Some things are so darn difficult to explain sim in simple way, you know. I think it's even difficult to explain if you're native in English, but if it's your second language, it's double difficult. Susan Hartley, we missed your chats. Worried about you and your mental state. <laughs> That's for sure. I'm becoming mental. Um... You heard and we can see it and feel it, my friend. Sure am, sure am. Sending you love and prayers to lift your spirits and give you hope for the better times. Thank you, Susan. Thank you, thank you. You are absolutely right. Well, mental state, I'm not sure how bad it suffered. I don't think that bad. But heartache, oh, there's so much of it. And... <laughs> I never had depression, but people kept saying that's what depression, how it looks like and all of that. It's like there's a huge weight on my shoulders and it's keeping me down, you know. And when I think, wow, it's impossible to have it heavier than this, something happens and boom, it just brings you even more down. That's how I feel. Uh, but, you know, there's not, not, nothing I can do. You know. Thank you so much for the super chat and thanks for the message. And thanks for wonderful words, Susan. I really, really, really appreciate it. And I missed uh, this, what I am doing right now. I missed knowing that you care and you write something and you give me feedback, you know, and I answer you. And this is, this is so great. Oh, quite a few super chats just popped up. Stop scamming him. Scamming man. Uh, another super chat. Principled, caring strongly what's right and wrong and acting. So thank you. That's kind of a what understood, but uh, good word to know. Principled. Demeanor. I, I know what demeanor is. <laughs> thank you. Expresses themselves. Yes. Thanks for explanation. Lorraine Prasnowski, great to see you. The usual, very usual suspect. Thank you for $5. There's a message from pa Patrick from Sweden. Um, thank you so much. I saw one on Russian TV that used a forbidden word. Then I saw 18 politicians delivering some kind of written protest. <laughs> Is something going on in Russia? Let's put it this way. 
This is spot on question, by the way. I am smiling, okay? I'm not giving you the answer. I have not heard anything, anything in the official Russian media. Therefore, I can I, I, I don't have anyone to quote and to like link anyone, but I'm smiling. And I'm going to make another stream about political wills turning in Russia uh, probably either early next week or later this week. So thank you so much for your message and um, uh, for your super chat and for your question. And again, I'm smiling. Black Cat, another five gifts of sponsorship. Thank you. Thank you so much, my friend. Your Racer, a question. Well, not a question, but a statement. Thank you for Super Chat. Thank you for giving a, the world a true understanding of life in Russia. Thank you, my friend. I'm not done. I'm just getting started. Liz Dumbrell, thank you so much for... Super chat, I appreciate it. Manos McLean, uh, thank you. I appreciate it, my friend. Message is strong enough. Michael Milkovitz, thank you for all honesty. Please keep yourself relaxed and healthy. And you too. We pray for you every day, and I pray for you separately. So please be healthy, become better and we really really wish that thank you I think I haven't missed anyone okay as a question from May Rag um, I know you've been following down our oh, feeling down and don't watch TV but apparently more and more National pundits are letting out some truth, which is a very encouraging sign. Well, May, uh, again, a very good question. Thank you. Very timely because I started watching TV again. I want to see what's going on there. And what I'm seeing, uh, well, I'm smiling. <laughs> uh, you know, wait until my next stream. Political wheels are turning at full speed now. I made the stream a week ago, so, right? And I was just on, like, spot on what would happen in a mere few days, okay? Nothing was happening back then, but I saw a few first signs. If you look for the small signs, you can build a bigger picture and do some forecasting in your head. And that's exactly what I did the political wheels start turning. That's what it was all about. Turning at full speed, my friends. Eddie, thank you so much. I hope you and your family are well, and I think something's going on in the next time in Russia. Tell you what, we've been praying. We've been praying, Eddie. Thank you so much. King Nero, good to see you. Big K, you have your health and appear to be in good shape. There's a little trick. I bought a new light uh, soft box and it's making me look much better than before. But thank you. Always treasure that because when it slides, it won't care about anything else. Money won't fix that. But I'm feeling much better. I 99% stopped coughing, coughed just, just a little bit here and there. Thank you very much, my friend. I appreciate your message and your help. D1 Harris, is Russian winter really that bad? Pretty nasty, D1. Thank you for the super chat. If you consider the sheer size of Russia, how bad is winter conditions affect supply of economic logistics? Russia is not that dependent on uh, seasonality of logistics. Um, just, just, you know, we burn more gas, we burn more oil. That's pretty much it, you know. So not, not that much. Loki Sun. Thank you so much. Take care. Appreciate your input from the inside. Very hard to find people 
talking openly can understand the feeling that pulls you down because this is a situation that's most of us out of our hands. Cheers. Uh, Loki son, I think I'm the only one except for Nikki Proshan. Uh, that's pretty much it. There's no one else left. Thank you for your support. Joe, King Kong noticed State TV actually spoke down about SMO regrouping. I was surprised. SF Joe, I'm smiling. The wheels are turning. Tick tack. Tick tack. Tick tack. If you know what I mean. Two minutes to midnight. Thank you. I'm feeling very hopeful too. Tick tack. Tick tack. Zdenek Pavlatka. Hi. Long time no see. Thank you for the support. Missed quite a few of your streams recently. Glad I caught this one. Great job explaining it. Glad you understood. <laughs> That's very important to me. It was a hard one to deliver. Rebecca Carlson. Thank you so much, Rebecca. Appreciate it. Um, I think I missed a few super chats, but there's just so many and I was... Um, Mods, could you please let me know if I missed anyone? Finola just joining now. Well, you can uh, watch at the end. Blackhead, this great guy prays for everyone. Please keep on. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes. I would really appreciate it. Yes, you do. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Blackhead. Athos, is Briggs helping Russia in any way? How is the blog doing? It's not helping in any way. No, it's not. How is the blog doing? I don't know. It's kind of non-existing. Um, Frank in Texas, crazy Russian Sergey is taking over for Bold. Oh, I actually saw today what happened with Bold. Uh, they released the video of how he was defending himself in the court, in the Russian court. Oh, my friends, that was scary. It was uh, very uneasy for me. The questions they were asking him, the state prosecutor, you know, that's... Ouch. Scary, scary, scary. Sean, hey, great to see you. Thank you for such a generous super chat. Economy. This is fine. I hope you get the meme reference. <laughs> you look tired. Big hugs. Thank you so much, my friend. Thank you, Sean. I get it. Yeah, this is fine. Like Joe Biden said. Uh, uh, inflation? Well, inflation is good. You dumb, dumb son of a kid. <laughs> Remember, he thought his mic was off, but he was on. Um, thank you so much, Cosmo, for Czech Republic, right? Did you start to exercise? Yes, I did. I did. I started jogging in the morning, every morning, uh, walking a lot right now, uh, and try to jog. You see, with my weight, jogging is actually can be dangerous because it can greatly affect my knees, so I, I'm taking it slow. But um, I have started. Thank you so much. Mods, just a few more minutes, if you can. Carol, thank you so much. Ivan Zlatar, Ivan, stay strong. Your efforts are greatly appreciated. Your spirit is an inspiration. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You know how difficult that would be without streaming for me? I get physically tired. I mean, you know, um, I start at 11 p.m., finish at midnight. I cannot go to bed until 1, 1 1.30 because it takes me some time to wind down. Especially if the stream is emotional and then it just turns me upside down emotionally. But physical tiredness is nothing compared to what is happening inside my heart inside my head that is really really bad 
not just not me i'm not i'm not complaining i'm i'm telling you like what what is happening not just me tons of people around me and i'm streaming and i converse with you and i get so much feedback and so much support from you you know forget about super chats they're they're great money is great but just regular words just regular messages prayers you know all this stuff this is fantastic you know not not even fantastic this is just it gives me like gross wings behind my back so I can just fly and hover above the surface, if you know what I mean. If I didn't have this, if I, didn't, I couldn't talk to the community, to people, I would feel 10 times worse. I, I, I don't know what I would have done. So thank you so, so much for these words. Common sense. Love your name. <laughs> Common sense. This is fantastic. Stay safe, don't wear blue underwear. <laughs> um, I'm not brave because I get, I get, I'm, I fear, okay? Um, I used to freak, not, not freak out, but I used to get like really nervous in, before every single stream for the first couple months, three months. But then I got used to this feeling and I don't get that much anxiety anymore. But I still, I have this... <laughs> Fear at any time, any time, um, because, you know, Russia is not the safest place. And I hear about arrests every day and not too long ago, a few days ago, there was a raid in a few cities and they locked up quite a, well, not locked up, but arrested quite a few people, um, charged them with illegal activities, including one reporter from Rostov and Don. I don't think they charged her with anything, but they brought her for questioning and stuff like that. And trust me, that's a very uneasy feeling. Calvin, thank you so much. Let me just uh, go through a few questions and... Uh, American girl, try journaling to get in out of your mind. I just don't no no time for that. Right now, I am don't have any spare time whatsoever. YouTube is taking everything that I had like a few hours left. Uh, these streams actually take a long time. I start getting for the stream about. 40, 30 minutes before I set up all the equipment, I double check, you know, it's not that easy. Then um, I have to prepare for the stream and depending on uh, what kind of a stream, like for example, yesterday, I didn't prepare much, just like an hour or so. I kind of like play out stream in my head, the bullets, what I'm going to be talking about. Uh, when it's emotional, I do less work preparing when it's more numbers and figures like today i do much more work uh i i you know read the articles i read the statistics data and so forth so it's from two to three hours every day and streaming one hour then i have to take all the equipment down you know and plug everything in it takes me like an hour hour and a half to unwind a little bit and then I try to make videos, standalone videos, not streaming. And that just so much time. So journaling, I simply don't have time for that. There's another super chat for from Susan. Thank you so much. We're all in, in this together. We're all paying the price for the evil doers in this world. Love your angels with swords wishes. They lift our spirits. Susan, thank you. Thank you. Uh, we've been praying. We prayed every single day, all of us, right? And you know what? For the first time, I perhaps feel um, getting close. You know, tick-tock, tick-tock. I love the sound. Tick-tock, tick-tock. Amir, thank you. Pray for your unconquerable spirit every day. Hasn't been conquered yet. I hope it stays that way. 
Thank you. Um, Fern says, please pray for all people suffering from anxiety and depression. Yeah, I will do that. Let me write it down in my prayer book. A good prayer. Will do, thank you. No tea tonight. Robert, yes, there is tea. Uh, like I said, that's Chinese puer. It's not Sri Lankan uh, English breakfast, orange pico. This this stuff is knocks you right out, you know. It's earthy. It's like smoky taste and smell. And uh, it's very, very um, barbaric taste. Where Sri Lankan taste is like uh, very exquisite. This one is it is a lot of taste, but it's like very rough, so to speak. Mads, if knees give you problems, start with bicycle exercise. They are not giving me problems. I just know if I start run, running like crazy right now at my weight, I might wear down my cartilage. Like, you know... Uh, like sandpaper inside, you know. Uh, that's what happens when people with excess weight start running a lot. So I take it, it easy. I want my knees not to hurt for a long time. So thanks for advice. But uh, I'm also thinking of starting swimming. Ferrari guy, what's going on with the safety of the surroundings of the Russian oil moguls? Like Ivan Pichurin who fell off side of the boat um well you know as much as i do but i noticed that case of the guy who fell off the boat and guess what his boss also something tragic happened to him earlier a few months earlier um and he died okay so uh, ferrari guy not my problem i really feel bad for these people that's all you know Your fans would flood social media if you suddenly stop um, posting videos. If that happens, and if it happens because of the knock on the door, so please turn to my Telegram channel. Um, my wife would probably notify you of what's going on and stuff like that. Um, but I hope it doesn't happen. I, I hope. Julia, howdy, howdy. We need people, workers in Alaska. I wish you could have you over for a few months to explore while things come down there. Thank you, Julia. Me too. Me too. I wish I could go. A lot of people, especially after the last couple posts, um, they saw comments like every other comment is like, please run, 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 you know, and flee and... My friends, well, first of all, it's very personal. You know, I cannot talk about my plans online. I hope you understand. And the second thing is, I have moral obligations to stay here in Russia. My mom is old. I am the only person who's left, uh, who she has. Uh, you know, I can't leave her. It'd be betrayal. You know, I don't... Be I'm not a tra like I don't betray anyone, especially my mom. Um, so there are circumstances, and it's not that easy. Okay, uh, I understand the risks. I understand how things are going, not going well. Uh, you saw my stream yesterday. I was like one thousand percent sincere and honest, and yet there are some things in life that are not so simple. Like get up and go. Okay, uh, there are some. This is such a complicated decision. But Julie, I wish I wish I could come. I wish Alaska. Well, it's as beautiful as Russia because they're next to 
next to one another, far east of Russia and Alaska, you know, kind of the same. What do the Russian TV say about the death of Queen Elizabeth II? I didn't really watch TV about that, but in general, Russians liked her very much. A lot of people brought flowers to the embassy, English embassy in Moscow. I wanted to do that. I had intentions. It didn't happen. Just too many things at once, you know. Um, she was a great person in my mind. In That's how I saw her. And a lot of Russians have the same or they had the same opinion about her. Uh, no one had anything bad to say about Quinn. And uh, Vladimir Putin was actually the first world leader who called the new king and congratulated him. I don't know why he did that, but that's a fact. <coughs> Arnis, um, thank you so much for the support. Glad to see you back from uh, on form after a couple of heavy vlogs. You wait until tomorrow's vlog. It's also gonna be heavy. It's not. I'm not back. I think I'm not back for a long time uh, because things that are happening in Russia they're just freaking tragic, you know. Just a quick question: Does the latest news make you feel more heartened or dismayed? Big love from Riga. Thank you so much, Arnis, for your support. And uh, I'm smiling. <laughs> I'm smiling. You know, I, I'm not going to answer your question, but I'm smiling. You know, I, uh, I'm i going to make a stream about political wills keep on turning and turning. And uh, I keep on hearing this tic-tac sound. And we'll see. Time will tell. I hope you read between the lines. Tell you what, Julia, if only my babushka could come visit with me, I would come visit fast. <laughs> Thank you. Blackout, before we go to prayer, prudence. Uh, Thank you so much, everyone. <laughs> I love this comment from Big Nose Jaw. What's happening in Russia? <laughs> I don't know, all is good, you know, quiet. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Man, I've been talking <laughs> what's happening in Russia for the past <laughs> seven months. And <laughs> you just show up and it's like, hey, what's happening in Russia? <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Lots of things happening in Russia. Uh Okay. Mean Darton again. Uh no official news about that, but I'm smiling, you know. Smiling, smiling. Don't support rats. It's actually a great name. Great name and it's a great uh to see the super chat from you because your name says don't support rats and you support me therefore you think i'm not a rat that's <laughs> that's good <laughs> the meek sow more seeds it's better to sow unseen at times may this help your purposes thank you so much it sure does thank you you're the racer play stupid games with stupid prizes Tick tock, tick tock. Win stupid prizes. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, you do things and you think that you're not going to get certain results. That's kind of crazy to me, okay? You do things, you get certain results, and then you go, whoa, what happened? Well, you know... <laughs> You should have known, you should have thought of it way before, you know what I mean? <laughs> so anyway, uh, 
I think it's time to time to time to go. Eddie, thank you for two euro. What's up in Russia? <laughs> yeah, good one. Huh? What's up? No, nothing. All quiet. <laughs> Uh, Joseph, I was born and raised in the USA, have the ability to claim Polish citizen by descent. Should I get it based on current events? Um, I don't know. That's probably not a question for me, but at you, for yourself and for Polish people, because... If, I guess you should claim it, the citizenship of a country if you feel something for the country, for Poland. If you feel like it's your ancestors' country, go and check it out. Come and, and spend some time in Poland. Talk to Polish people. If something in your heart moves, you know, then you definitely should claim citizenship. And then come to Poland and spend time there and you know, involve Poland into your life. Other than that, I mean, why would you claim Pol Polish citizenship? That's that's my answer. Anyway, we're all way, way overdue. Uh, Bob is getting <laughs> twitchy. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Um, it's nice to see you laughing. Thank you. Brown, Brown and P. Thank you so much. Well, Steven Seagal is Steven Seagal. I don't really care about that guy. You know, I liked his movies back from the 80s when he used to be a fighter, but you know, don't watch the guy that much any longer, you know. My friends, thank you. This stream is actually... Good. I feel really good about it. I, um, unlike yesterday and day before yesterday. Um, thank you. Thank you so much for the stream. Um, thank you for conversations and thanks for the support and the super chats and words and wishes. And let's finish this stream magnificently. Let's pray. Uh, and for people for events, for countries, and, you know, if you're religious, please join me, if you're not, please join me, I'm asking you, begging you, uh, you don't have to call it prayer, just send good wishes, good vibes, good energy along with us to people, let's do it. Dear God, thank you so much for giving us this day. Thank you for putting food on our tables, roofs of our heads, and giving us, surrounding us with people who we love and who love us. Please help our children. Keep them safe and healthy, because they are the best that we have and the most valuable that we have. Um, please give us wisdom to raise our children the way that when they grow up they will make this world a better place and they will do a better job than we have done. Please help Ukraine. Help by touching hearts of people who can make decisions to stop the bloodshed in Ukraine and fill them with love, passion, mercy, empathy, forgiveness, Make the hearts softer, open their eyes, so they make this decision to stop the bloodshed. I'm asking to reach out and touch hearts of American president and Russian president. Touch their hearts, fill them with love, fill them with mercy, fill them with forgiveness, compassion. Open their eyes, so 
they are moved and they will stop the bloodshed. Please help everyone in Ukraine who has been affected by this terrible tragedy. Answer everyone's prayers. Give people what they need, strength, forgiveness, happiness, um, recovery, um, anything they need. Please answer their prayers and make their wishes come true, please. Send angels to every single person who is in Ukraine right now. So angels, keep everyone out of harm's way and not one single drop of blood is shed any longer. Please help everyone who is helping Ukrainians, opening their hearts, homes, wallets, minds, sending prayers, good wishes. Please help everyone who is fleeing and running for his or her life. Um, please send help and send good people their way. I'm asking for pregnant women who are trying to, who are deciding to keep baby or not, their babies or not, please reach out and talk to them in the way that you know how to talk. Surround them by loved ones and help so they make the right decision. Please help my country, Russia. Send strongest angels with sharpest swords led by Saint Michael to rid of demons have, that have hijacked my country. Make it run by the angels, make it righteous again, make it shine again. Thank you so much for bringing everyone into this community. For us to create, thank you for the chance for us to create this community and come together and pray together. Please help everyone who is praying or watching us pray. Answer everyone's wishes, uh, prayers and make everyone's wishes come true. I would like to mention a few people who need your help. They are Michael Milkovitz waiting and going for blood transfusion. Um, please help him. Needs your help real bad. Cindy Braddock going for surgery with her arm. Elena, Natasha, Jake, Michael, Olya, Dasha, Sky, Bonnie. Igor, Buzz, Jean-Paul, Paula, Janine, Marlene, Susan S., Fiona, Madeline, Stephen, Alan, Freddy, Sabrina, Felicia, Preacher's father, um, the person also asking for peace for China, USA, Russia, Taiwan, and Ukraine, family of Rudy Kaisley, Richard with his heart condition, Robert Morgan, Mallory M., Please help with her professional situation. Uh, may Scott Nesbitt's sister rests in peace and please give Scott strength to go over pain. Just Terry, Brittany S. Yes. Please um, may the Queen of England, Elizabeth II, rest in peace and please. Uh, send support to her family. Lars Hendrick's father, please help the father to start eating right so he gains weight. Wait for it. Lane Hankins, please help everyone who is down with anxiety and depression. That's really hard to get out without any help, so please provide help to everyone who needs it. Um, King Nero, Gaby Hyman, please help with the pain with shingles. Martin, Joanne, Donald from Wisconsin, who always asks for himself and for his country, the United States. Allison, Dave Moyers, I found Waldo, Liz, Deborah, 
uh, Isabel Ligo, may her father rest in peace and please give her strength. Janice Burgess, Maureen Ann, M and her sister. Ariana, Liz Dum no, Dumbrell, Bruce B. Kayleen, Michael, Thomas, Tony, Bob, Jessica, Minutes to Midnight. Sandy Workman and especially her spouse, her husband, uh, needs help. Please send them complete recovery. Mr. Hansen, Heidi Howitz, Carol Reed, broken arm. Um, I am asked to ask for all those are traveling and for liberty to be preserved in the United States of America. Also, I'd like to ask for four kids that need your help. They are Maverick, Sebastian, Britt Salanders, and Coulter. Please perform your miracles, help them, send them home to their families healthy so they live happy and healthy lives and long lives. Um, they they need help help and and miracles in their loved ones their families also need miracles. Thank you so much, dear Jesus. Amen. Um, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for praying with me. Thanks for listening to me. There will be another message tomorrow, and I want to remind you that you are absolutely awesome and you rock thank you for coming and we will see you soon mods thank you for another great stream